It's that time of the year again, and I'm not talking about brushing off the Ugg boots ready for Windsor, although that is a fantastic idea. I'm talking about making last minute contributions into your superannuation, a strategy which can potentially save you thousands of dollars in tax. And now before we jump in, I just wanna remind you that this information is relevant for the current financial year, that is the 2022-23 financial year. So if you're watching this video post 1 July 2023, then just be aware that some of the rules may have changed. Hello guys, Brad here from The Guided Investor. Welcome back to the channel for another video. If you're new here, consider hitting that subscribe button because I post regular videos about how you can do more with your money. And today we are talking about last minute contributions into your superannuation with the intention to save some tax. To save tax, you need to make a personal deductible contribution into your superannuation. Now, this is a form of voluntary member contribution. So you take money out of your account, you transfer it into your superannuation fund and you claim a tax deduction by treating it as a concessional contribution. It's effectively the same thing as salary sacrificing into your superannuation, it's just a different method to achieve the same net result. Under a salary sacrifice arrangement, your employer contributes additional funds pre-tax to super on your behalf and you receive the tax benefit as you go via a reduced PIYG instalment. Under a personal deductible contribution, you make the contribution yourself using post-tax money and claim a deduction when you lodge your tax return. The benefit of a personal deductible contribution over a salary sacrifice contribution is that you don't have to have a predetermined arrangement like you do with salary sacrifice. So with salary sacrifice, it all needs to be set up with your employer in advance. With a personal deductible contribution, you can basically make the contribution whenever you like. And this is great if you're trying to get a last minute sneaky contribution into your super before the end of the financial year. Also, as you are making the contribution from post-tax money, you're not getting the tax benefit along the way. So this means that you're more likely to get a tax refund. Now let me give you an example as to how this can work. Let's say you earn 100,000 gross, that's before tax, and you have no other investment income and have no deductions. Throughout the year, you should have paid $24,967 in tax through the PAYG system. When you lodge your tax return, you don't have any additional income to declare nor deductions to claim. As a result, you will not owe anything to the tax office, nor will you receive a tax refund. The POYG was spot on, so you're all squared. Now let's assume that you make a $10,000 tax deductible contribution to superannuation. In this instance, you still would have paid $24,967 in POYG tax throughout the year, but now you have a $10,000 deduction to claim. As a result, the ATO will calculate that you have paid $24,967 in tax, but you only owe them 21,517. So you'll get a tax refund of $3,450. This can be particularly handy if you have realized a capital gain by selling an asset throughout the financial year. So if you know that there is a big tax bill coming, well then you can make a personal deductible contribution into superannuation to help soften that blow. Now of course everyone's situation is different and therefore everyone's tax calculation is different. So the amount of refund that you actually receive may vary a lot from this. But what this basic calculation does show is that making a personal deductible contribution to your superannuation can be a beautiful thing. Not only will you save money in personal income tax, but when the contribution hits your superannuation fund, it's gonna be invested and then compounding returns can begin. But of course, with everything in finance, there are pros and there are cons. So let's look at the restrictions and the potential downsides now. There are age restrictions on making personal deductible contributions to your superannuation. If you're below age 67, then you're eligible. If you're aged between 67 and 75, you need to meet a work test in order to make this type of contributions. So that is, you must have worked at least 40 hours during a consecutive 30 day period in the current financial year. This can be as an employee or a self-employed person. Once you are over the age of 75, you are no longer eligible. A tax deductible contribution to super will form part of your concessional contributions cap, which in the current financial year has a cap limit of $27,500. Employee contributions and salary sacrifice contributions are both going to count towards this cap limit. So before making any contributions into your superannuation, you need to contact your super fund and see what contributions have already been made in the current financial year. And don't forget that 
The financial year doesn't end until the 30th of June, so you need to allow for potential contributions going into your super fund before that date. You may have the ability to utilize any unused carry forward concessional contributions. So from 1 July 2018, if you haven't utilized your full concessional contributions cap limit, you can carry forward the unused amount for up to five years, provided your total, total super balance is below 500,000 on 30 June in the previous financial year. The easiest way to find out how much carry forward concessional contributions you have available is to log into your MyGov account, click on the ATO link services, click on super, information, and carry forward concessional contributions. Assuming you are eligible to make a personal deductible contribution and you have the cap limit available, there are still a few considerations that you need to make before jumping in. Firstly, it's important to note that concessional contributions are taxed by your super fund at a rate of 15%. Given this, it's not tax effective to make a concessional contribution if you earn less than roughly 20,000 as you basically pay no tax outside of super. The net tax saving from a concessional contribution can be calculated as a difference between your marginal tax rate and your superannuation tax rate of 15%. If you're fortunate enough to earn over 250,000, then you will get slugged with division 293 tax. This is an additional 15% tax on any contributions that would otherwise take your income over the $250,000 threshold. So assuming division 293 tax did apply, this would take the tax on contributions up to 30%, which is still a whole lot better than your marginal tax rate at that income level, which is 47% when you include the Medicare levy. If you want to learn more about Division 293 tax and how it works, I did a whole video on this not too long ago, so I will link that in the description box below. Once inside superannuation, you won't be able to access those funds until you meet a condition of release. Now, the most common condition of release is reaching preservation age and retiring. So so if you were born after 1 July 1964, your preservation age is 60. Now there are other circumstances, limited circumstances where you might be able to access the funds early, such as under the first home buyer super saver scheme or financial hardship or compassionate grounds. Before making a contribution, you should also understand how the money is going to be invested with inside your super. And I always tell people, treat your superannuation like you would any other asset that is in your personal name. Because at the end of the day, it is your money sitting there for your retirement, so you need to feel comfortable with how it's invested. You have until the 30th of June to get your last minute contributions into superannuation. However, you have to remember that the contribution is gonna count in the financial year once it is processed and allocated by your superannuation fund. So not necessarily the date you sent the money. Bearing this in mind, it's probably best if you make your final contributions prior to the 15th of June, just to allow for that processing time. Making the contribution is pretty easy. All you need to do is contact your superannuation fund and ask for the banking details for your account. Most super funds will let you do it via either BPAY or EFT. Now, if you're doing it via EFT, there is normally a reference number that you need to list in the description just to make sure it gets allocated into your specific account. Once the contribution is in, it's time to fill in a notice of intention to claim form, which can be found on the ATO's website. By completing this form, you are letting your super fund know that you intend to claim a tax deduction for the contribution, and therefore your super fund will allocate it as a concessional contribution. Once the form has been processed, your super fund will send you out an acknowledgement of notice of intent, which is basically a little letter. And if you use an accountant, they were gonna to wanna to see this letter prior to claiming the tax deduction in your return. And that's it. You've successfully made a contribution, had it allocated correctly and claimed a tax deduction for that contribution. And if you do this strategy, you're gonna thank yourself twice. You're gonna thank yourself once when you have a reduced tax bill. And secondly, when you're older in life and you have a nice juicy retirement nest egg. There are other reasons you might want to do a last minute contribution into your superannuation other than saving tax. And so I won't go into these in a huge amount of detail because the video is already fairly long, but let's touch on a few of them quickly. The government co-contribution. If you earn less than $42,016 and you make a 1,000 non-concessional contribution into your super, you may be eligible for the $500 government co-contribution. If you earn between $42,016 and $57,016, you may receive a reduced co-contribution payment. The eligible spouse contribution. So if your spouse earns less than 37,000 and you make an eligible spouse contribution of $3,000, 
you may be eligible for a $540 tax offset. And also simply to just transition assets into super. As you approach retirement, it may be a good idea to utilize your super to house as much of your asset base as you can. Why? Because subject to certain eligibility criteria, you can turn your super into an account-based pension which is effectively a tax-free entity. That's no tax on any income, capital gains, or pension payments. Under these different strategies, you would utilize what's called a non-concessional contribution into super, which comes with its own set of rules and cap limits. So if any of those you think might apply to you, I would suggest doing a little bit more research to find a few more details on non-concessional contributions. But that's it for me today, guys. I hope you found this video helpful. It is a staple of mine to do at the end of every financial year. So if you like it, please give it a thumbs up and I will see you guys in the next one.